Video of a giant saltwater crocodile released in 2013 has begun to circulate again after a recent analysis I did of the crocodile. Since the time I've released the video, I have been sent more photos to analyze the giant crocodile. I will also be discussing some interesting updates about prior giant crocodiles I have discussed on the channel before, so stay tuned. While I had heard some reports of this while I made the first video, it seems the unofficial name for this beast is the Port Blair Giant. Several photos of this crocodile seem to have been taken since 2012, indicating the animal has been well known for some time. With all these photos, let's start with the one that looks to have been taken in the same place as the video. In this photo, the crocodile appears to be in the same area as what's shown in the video. This is based on this large piece of wood sticking out, which looks similar in both the film and photo. While I had some doubts if this was the same crocodile in the video, due to the lighter colored scales on its neck, the crocodile was half submerged in the video, so I wouldn't have been able to tell regardless. One detail that's interesting and only seen in the photo is a white discoloration on the back of the crocodile, which is not seen in the video or any other photos. However, it's possible this area of the back could have been dry compared to the rest of the crocodile, or this white area could have been dry dirt, who knows. The main thing that grabbed everyone's attention in the 2013 video was how wide the crocodile was. In my video analysis, I stated that while the Port Blair Giant could be naturally wide, it could have had food in its stomach, making it very bloated. With these new photos, it gives us a better idea. Although many of these photos show the crocodile semi-submerged, some photos, especially two taken in possibly 2016, shows the animal could be naturally wide. One photo in particular shows the crocodile on land and gives us a better idea of the crocodile's proportions. Although the photos and video were taken at different angles, I would say that the crocodile had food in its stomach when the film was taken, making him more bulky than what he naturally is. Still, he is a big crocodile. I have read some comments asking if the crocodile is female and perhaps has eggs, making it more bloated. I am confident in this being a male and not female. With how bulky this crocodile is in general, especially with how big the head is, these are all characteristics of a large male, not a female. I am unaware of a female saltwater crocodile with morphologic characteristics such as these. With the more clear photos of the crocodile's head, we can see it has a very rough head with a lot of bumps. This was actually a factor scientists used when trying to determine Lolong's age. This photo was taken in 2022, so with us having current photographs, I would say that this crocodile is currently an older individual being several decades old. One thing we can do to figure out this crocodile's length, which we couldn't do before, is find a head length to total body length ratio. You see, saltwater crocodiles before they get to the 13 to 14 foot mark have a head length to total body length ratio of about 1 to 7. But when they get bigger, this ratio changes. Once they get past 16 feet in length, it's about 1 to 8, and animals approaching or at 20 feet seem to have a ratio of about 1 to 9. One photo in particular shows a good top and side profile of the Port Blair Giant, which we can use. While this photo hides away most of the single scoots of the tail, I found in a study that it's about 18% of the total body length, so I was able to use this when trying to examine the animal's full length. Based on the rough estimates I did examining this photo and taking account for the rest of the tail not being shown, this animal had a head length to total body length ratio of about 1 to 9. While this does not prove this animal is 20 feet or above, it gives more evidence to my belief this crocodile being at least 18 feet long. Also, with me examining all these photos, I don't believe this crocodile is 23 to 25 feet like others have suggested. Still, this seems to be an exceptionally big saltwater crocodile. So for other giant crocodiles, I have updates on Chris the Savannah King and Old Charlie. Chris the Savannah King was a supposed 28-foot saltwater crocodile killed in the Norman River of Australia in 1957. It was killed by a well-respected crocodile hunter and measured by her husband. The crocodile was killed and measured in the riverbank, but was too heavy to drag away. The only evidence for this story is a photo that was supposedly lost in a 1974 flood. In my original video about Chris, I stated how one of the reasons I doubted the story was because it seemed odd that there was no attempt to cut off the head of the animal, a common prize for croc hunters. Well, it turns out that actually was the case, or it was at least attempted. I found a quote recently from Ron with interesting details that stated, quote, The type of ammunition used was a 300 H&H &H Magnum, either Winchester or Norma, and the crocodile died instantly as was intended. As a tractor was not conveniently to hand, there was no possible way we could drag the extremely bulky body onto dry land away from the tidal reach. And although the head was severed, it was so heavy I could not lift it. 
we had no means of moving such a weight. To give more perspective on how big this crocodile's head was, Ron said the eyes of the crocodile were as big as apples, which are much bigger than normal croc eyes. Another detail that's interesting, which I knew about but didn't bring up in my first video about Chris, is that the biggest crocodile Ron had measured up until that point was only 18 feet long. Old Charlie was a 20-foot saltwater crocodile killed in the Mary River of Australia in 1974. He was unfortunately killed by poachers, but is considered to be the largest verifiably measured crocodile in Australia. A detail in this crocodile's capture was that it was caught in an illegally set fishing net meant for Bear Mundy, but the crocodile had trapped its jaws in the net. I have recently learned something interesting about how the crocodile behaved before it was killed. I discovered more details about Old Charlie's death in a book titled Cops, Crocs, and Leopard Skin Jocks, which tells the story of a poacher by the name of Roy Wright, who was involved in Old Charlie's death. The book had this to say about Old Charlie when he was stuck in the net. Old Charlie had been caught before in nets, that's why he just lay there waiting to be released. The old croc had lived a charmed life when he had contact with man in his nets before so he knew the drill. When he couldn't get loose, he just laid still and waited to be freed. Unfortunately, he didn't take into account the big game hunter and his band of cutthroats. If this is true, that would mean that a giant saltwater crocodile, which is considered to be one of, if not the most aggressive species of crocodilians alive today, had learned to be calm and coexist with humans. These poachers had killed an ambassador animal that not only showed how big these animals could get, but also killed an animal that was not a mindless killing machine. While old Charlie would still be a dangerous animal, he most likely knew how to live around humans. It should be noted that he was probably scared of us due to the fact that he had been shot at twice. Still, old Charlie seems to have been a true loss to the natural world. I will probably do a video in the future about the death of old Charlie because this whole story covered in this book is really interesting and insightful. I wish I had this information when I made my first video about old Charlie. To learn more about the animals you just saw, buy my book, What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians. It examines claims of giant crocodiles, a World War II massacre, their regenerating tails, alligators and sewers, their record land speeds, and more. The book looks at a variety of subjects many people, including experts, get wrong about these animals, and I desperately wanted to dispel the myths that have persisted so long. Buy What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians in physical or digital formats. Link in bio, comments, or description to buy.